Hi guys, Stanley here. Today, I just want to talk about something different from just investing. Let's talk a little bit about personal finance. I follow many YouTubers that talk about finance here as well, and I hear about their money tips all the time. Most famously, Stephen Graham and Kevin O'Leary always talk about never buying coffee outside as they're extremely overpriced. Stephen Graham even launched a coffee company surrounding that idea. While it is true, but sometimes I still enjoy a nice cup of special coffee once in a while. And that is because I don't really believe that we should force ourselves to withhold something that will bring us joy in life just to save some extra money. After all, what is life if we cannot enjoy it? But the idea of cutting some simple expenses and just reinvesting that could potentially help us save a lot of money in the future got me thinking about what other things we can save on. And I experimented with one this week. And since we are still facing lockdown here, we have been stuck at home for months now. My hair has really been getting quite long. And if you have seen some of my previous video, you will see that I have been having some really bad hair days. So I decided to let my wife cut my hair. But there's just one small problem. She never done it before. So don't worry, YouTube to the rescue. After a few YouTube videos, she told me she's ready, you know. So how did it turn out? Well, take a look. Well, to be honest, it turns out better than I expected. What do you think? So here is the math behind that theory on how much this could help me save if I continue to let my wife just cut my hair for the rest of my life. In normal times, I cut my hair every two weeks or so, and that costs about 20 bucks uh, per time. This means that I could potentially save up to $520 a year if I cut down on these expenses. And if I just reinvest that, assuming, you know, about an 8% return till the day I die, well, maybe till the day I lose all my hair, maybe in 30 years, how much do you think that I could have saved? My calculation is that it's just slightly less than $60,000 by the time I no longer need a haircut. And from this experiment, I learned a few things, which is number one, always trust your wife or husband, and they might surprise you. And number two is we can learn anything from YouTube, and I really mean anything. And number three is really the topic of this video, which is instead of looking to cut expenses that deprive us from our joy in life, we can look into cutting some expenses that we might not really care that much about. And if we consciously reinvest that saving, it could really add up very significantly. For me, I was never very particular about my hair. You know, I thought the worst if she failed, I'll just shave it off and I'll be fine. <laughs> but for you, I'm not asking you to cut your own hair. I'm just suggesting that maybe we can all relook into our life and expenses. What are some of the expenses that you have been spending regularly, but you turn out that you don't really care that much about? For another example, I just cut my cable TV subscription as I no longer watch that much TV. Or you might be spending some money in games that you no longer enjoy, or you have regular meet up with friends. Well, maybe not now, but in normal times, and you might not even really enjoy their company that much. Uh, I'm sure all of us can have some expenses that we are spending on regularly, and we no longer remember why do we need to do that. What expenses are you thinking of cutting? If you can carve that out and purposefully reinvest that instead of just spending that money to other things, you might just see a huge jump in your saving over the long term. Compounding really works in magical way, even if we start small. Anyway, that's it from me. Till we meet again, my name is Stanley. Invest safely.